After an extremely long wait, we finally got to experience CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077. And even though there was a lot of hype before its release, and you know, many people ended up with all kinds of different feelings about it, personally, I'm actually enjoying it very much, and I do think it is one of the best games I've ever played. I still don't think it's better than The Witcher 3, in my opinion, but it's definitely somewhere up there. Now next to its pretty captivating story that just, you know, sucks you in, this game simply looks amazing. But the problem is, you do need to have a pretty high-end system to be able to see that fully. And if you don't, or if you're playing on a last generation of consoles, you will probably have some performance issues that, you know, might affect the overall experience. But what about laptop gamers? I mean, I haven't seen many people talking about how will laptops bear with a demanding title like this one. So I grabbed a bunch of laptops that I had available here with uh, all kinds of different specs, uh, going from some pretty basic machines that only have internal graphics and then all the way up to some really high-end proper gaming laptops and I tested this game on them. So if a gaming laptop is your vessel of choice, this video is for you. But before we start, this video is brought to you by Lexar and their NM700 SSD. The NM700 is a fast M.2 NVMe SSD with read speeds of up to 3500 megabytes per second and write speeds of over 2000 megabytes per second. It performed really well in our own testing and it stayed pretty cool while doing it, which makes it a great option if you're looking to upgrade your laptop with some extra storage. Check it out using the links in the description below. So let's look at our contenders first. At the very low end of the gaming spectrum, I have the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 that has a Ryzen 5 APU and an ASUS VivoBook that has an Intel Tiger Lake CPU that has Intel XC graphics. So these two laptops have the best integrated graphics performance Intel and AMD have to offer at the moment. Next in line would be the Lenovo Legion 5 with a GeForce GTX 1650 Ti. Now the 1650 Ti is what you will find in a lot of laptops from around $800 and up, uh, making it the entry-level gaming GPU of this generation, pretty much. Uh, then we have the Dell XPS 17 that comes with an RTX 2060 Max-Q. Uh, the XPS 17 is a high-end laptop, but the 2060 is more of a mid-range gaming GPU for laptops. Now, generally speaking, 2060 performance is very similar to a GTX 1660 Ti, but since it's an RTX card, it does support DLSS, which Cyberpunk especially just loves. And as proper high-end gaming machines, we have two laptops from ASUS. The Strix G15 with a GeForce RTX 2070 and an ROG SCAR 17 with an RTX 2070 Super. I know that sounds pretty similar and uh, even though the Super version is supposed to be the newer one, there's still a lot of laptops out there with both GPUs that are still being sold actively, so I would say it's really interesting to see what the actual difference is between them. Now technically, there are also laptops out there with an RTX 2080 Super, uh, which I don't have at the moment and I cannot really test, but the difference won't be that big and you should only expect them to be, you know, a couple of percent faster than the 2070 Super. Not more than that. And since the topic is my beloved cyberpunk, I wanted to take this opportunity to show off my cyberpunk goodies. I have a Razer Viper Ultimate here in this distinctive canary yellow. It is really light, it is really precise, and I have to say I think it's one of the best gaming mice of 2020. Plus, it has a yellow dock to match the mouse as well, and I mean, I mean, how cute is that? And next to that, I have a SteelSeries Arctis One wireless headset in the same cyberpunk theme. And if that is not enough fangirling for you, I still have my cyberpunk jacket on. If this is too yellow for you, I'm sorry. All right, before we dive into numbers, I do want to explain a little bit about the test itself. Now, Cyberpunk is a pretty intense open world game and performance will vary from area to area. So if you're in a small and calm indoor zone, uh, they're gonna be obviously easier on your system than being outside with a lot of things going on or being in a really big gunfight. For my test, I ran through the same outdoor area over and over again, and this actually shows lower average FPS numbers than you will see on average in the game, but it's not the lowest you will see. So generally speaking, big outdoor fights will lower your FPS a little bit under my results, but the overall average should be a bit higher than my results. So if you see a 60 FPS average in my graphs, 
that's a pretty good result, but anything over 50, I would consider to be an okay experience as well, as Cyberpunk is not really a super fast game and we're talking about, you know, gaming on a laptop here. There's so much more than just speed in this whole thing, I think. Now let's start with bad news. As expected, laptops without dedicated graphics cards don't do well at all. On the Intel Tiger Lake laptop, the game just wouldn't even run. It would crash every time before even reaching the menu. So I tried it on a ZenBook 13 as well that has the same uh, Intel XE graphics and no luck. I can safely confirm that you will not be able to play this game on a machine with Intel dedicated graphics. Not even a little bit. When it comes to the AMD Ryzen 5 4500U system, it did manage to start the game, but the performance was really rough. Even on 1080p low, the game was just a slideshow and it was impossible to even get a decent benchmark run. Now, lowering that resolution to 720p did help a tiny bit, but yeah, 21 FPS average is far from having a good experience. So let's move on to some dedicated graphics cards and I have to say that the things do look pretty rough here as well. Now I compared each of the four laptops at standard graphics presets in the game, so from low all the way up to ultra and then uh, with motion blur, film grain, depth of field and a couple of more settings turned off. So let's see the results without DLSS on. On 1080p low, the Dell XPS 17 with an RTX 2060 Max-Q just reaches 60 FPS, while the Legion 5 with a 1650 Ti doesn't even hit 50 in my test. However, by dropping the resolution to 1600 by 900, you end up with just over 60 FPS and a smooth overall gameplay. So, if you're okay with sacrificing resolution a little bit more and willing to play around with some settings, you can still enjoy the game just fine. So-so. On 1080p medium, only the two 2070 laptops were giving acceptable numbers. On 1080p high, the RTX 2070 Super was still holding on, while the 2070 non-Super dropped below 60, and on Ultra, even the 2070 Super was dipping below 60. But again, you know, we are playing one of the most demanding AAA titles on a laptop, so I guess it was to be expected. Fortunately though, uh, the game does support DLSS 2.0 upscaling, which does make a huge difference if you have a laptop with an RTX GPU. And no, Nvidia did not bully me into saying this, I actually think that DLSS 2.0 is objectively a good technology that actually does work. So let's see what kind of a difference we can get with DLSS turned on. Uh, as you can see, the game has a couple of DLSS settings, but on a 1080p laptop, your choice will not affect performance as much as you would think. Uh, I would just avoid ultra performance mode as it doesn't look good at all, but the rest should be, you know, pretty similar. I personally put it on balanced, uh, which I think looks about as good as a native render. Now on 1080p low, it made a nice difference for the 2060 Max-Q, uh, giving it a bit more headroom of above 60 FPS. Meanwhile, the two Asus laptops seem to be most likely running into a CPU limitation instead, showing only small gains. On 1080p medium, the 2060 did drop just below 60, but I would say DLSS makes enough of a difference there to make that setting playable and medium does look a lot better than low, in my opinion. So if you have an RTX 2060 or even a Max-Q model, you can expect a reasonable 1080p medium experience overall with DLSS on. If you have a 1660 Ti, uh, chances are you'll be looking at 1080p low at best. Both Asus laptops did show some benefits with DLSS here, but I wouldn't call it a big difference. Now on 1080p high, uh, that changes as DLSS is now really improving performance on the 2070 and the 2070 Super, going from around 60 FPS to mid 70s on both, and that is something you will actually notice while playing. But if we look at ultra, the FPS differences between ultra and high are actually surprisingly small, so I would personally go for ultra as it does look much better and it will just play just as smooth as on high. Now keep in mind there are a lot of other settings that you can play with to get a couple of frames more if you want to, but these numbers uh, in these graphs should be a good baseline of what you should expect. As for ray tracing, um, it gets pretty rough on a laptop, especially in a game like this that does offer a lot of ray tracing features. Uh, looking at ray tracing medium preset, uh, which is actually uh, ultra settings with 
uh, ray tracing feature is set to medium. Uh, only the RTX 2070 Super managed to stay above 60 FPS. The 2060 Max-Q just isn't going to cut it, and the 2070 Non-Super does a decent job with the LSS set to performance, but there is no question here that the newer Super models do pack that extra punch that you really need. I also tested the RTX Ultra preset as well, uh, but that turned out to be too hard even on the RTX 2070 Super with DLSS set to performance. Now Cyberpunk is definitely a very intense game that does require a lot and if you have a GTX 1650 Ti laptop and you just cannot get anything higher, you will have to sacrifice some settings but you will still be able to, you know, just about enjoy this game. Anything under that just won't work. And if you're looking to buy a laptop uh, to play this game, uh, an RTX 2060 will be just enough. But if you want to get more out of this game visually, you should go for an RTX 2070 Super or better. That's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you really like my jacket. If you did, give me a like and subscribe to Tech Testers for more. Bye guys, see you in the next one.